It's Tuesday, May 12. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Three new positive COVID-19 cases have been confirmed, bringing the total of confirmed cases in Jamaica to 505. The three new cases are two males and a female, ages ranging from 19 to 28 years. The Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, gave an update at a digital press briefing at Jamaica House. In the last uh, 24 hours, we have had three additional persons testing positive for COVID-19 uh, in Jamaica. There are now, therefore, 505 confirmed cases on the island. The three new cases are two females, two males, sorry, one female, with ages ranging from 19 to 28 years, so relatively young persons. All three persons are imported cases from the recent group of repatriated individuals uh, who are now based in St. Anne. So this brings to five, five, I think, six, six, the number of positive cases that came in. And this is, of course, the organized uh, flight from the UK. And, you know, Prime Minister and colleagues, it justifies the position that the government has taken in terms of the institutional quarantine of these individuals. Otherwise, we would have another set of challenges on our hands. Jamaica recorded its first case of COVID-19 on March 10, and in the days following, public spaces, such as schools, were closed. Public gatherings were scaled down, and social distancing measures announced. However, Prime Minister Andrew Honus says some of the restrictive measures will be loosened to allow for a gradual reopening of the society and the economy. Marlon Samuels has that story. Known for its high ratio of churches per capita, Jamaica is a highly religious society. There was good news for churchgoers on Monday. We will try the measures which I'm about to announce for two weeks. We will observe how faithfully they are being implemented. And if it works, then we will have them as a permanent feature in the Gazette. We are proposing that effective Sunday, May 17, 2020, churches may resume within a context agreed with the faith-based community. The physical distancing rules to apply within the sanctuary or worship space. And that is, we expect that a ratio of square footage to persons will be maintained, that is one person per 40 square feet. Mr. Holness also announced a loosening of spirits of another variety. Community bars will open economy around bar operations is significant. There are estimated ab approximately 10,000 bars. Uh, I'm told um, by, by other persons who know that I'm underestimating the number. I'm, I'm not expecting, indeed, that all 10,000 would be able to reopen. Some of them may have been decimated by the fall off in economic activity. They may have no stocks or be able to, to reopen when the opportunity is given. But those that intend to and those who can, I would want to re-emphasize what Minister Mackenzie has said, that this is a probationary period. We're giving you seven days notice to be able to put in place the measures the government also gave its first clear indication that it is inching towards reopening the country with the restarting of the tourism sector. The government has reiterated that the country must prepare for a new normal as it moves forward with the reality of COVID-19. Jamaica has so far recorded 505 cases of COVID-19. There are 90 recoveries and 9 deaths. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Monday announced amendments to the existing curfew hours. The new hours will take effect on Wednesday. From Wednesday, May 13th, 
the curfew hours will be adjusted. So on Wednesday, the 13th of May, the new curfew hours will start at 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. the next day for each day up to Sunday, the 24th of May, 2020. Mr. Holness said the curfew hours would be adjusted on the Labor Day weekend and would lead into a new curfew cycle. What we're going to do, as we did for the Easter weekend, is to have a tighter curfew, which would start on the Sunday before Labor Day, and the curfew hours would be on Sunday the 24th of May at 3 p.m., to 8 a.m. the following day, which would be Monday, Labor Day, and then 3 p.m. on Monday, Labor Day, to 5 a.m. on Tuesday, the 26th of May, when we would commence a new curfew cycle, and at that time, on Monday the 20, on Tuesday the 26th, the curfew would start at 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. the next day, and it will continue like that until the 31st of May. The Prime Minister also announced provisions for the transport sector. We have made provisions generally for transport operators, licensed transport operators, to be on the road one hour before and after. So they would have a longer period of time, but they would not be allowed to be transporting passengers. So in effect, uh, they have one hour to be able, if you work, for example, with the JUTC, to get to work. If you are a taxi man and you have to go and pick somebody up early in the morning, so you could start at four to five. That's your travel time for transport. And if you drop someone off and you have to get home from eight to nine in the first instance, and then from three to four in the second instance, and then in the third instance, from nine to 10. So we have allowed one hour for transportation um, operators to be able to pick up their first passenger and to drop off their last passenger and get back to their own home. He was speaking at a virtual press briefing at Jamaica House. Almost 200 Jamaicans are set to land on home soil on Wednesday. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Kamina Johnson-Smith says two flights carrying Jamaicans are to come into the island from Fort Lauderdale and New York in the United States. All returning, having gone through our process with the overseas missions, that is our Consulate General in Miami, our Consulate General in New York, and our Embassy, in, uh, in Washington, which have worked together with the consular department in Kingston to identify uh, the vulnerable and hardship cases and those persons with particular challenges to uh, return to Jamaica. Last Wednesday, a charter flight carrying 114 Jamaicans from the United Kingdom arrived in Jamaica. Those people have been quarantined at a hotel in St. Anne. The Minister of Education, Carl Samuda, says they're contemplating the use of predictive assessment for Jamaican students who were slated to sit CX examinations this year. We engage in predictive assessment, which is the basis on which we made our proposal um, at, the, at the meeting with the CARICOM ministers. What we do is we take the previous year's assignments, for easy language, and we assess the extent to which um, they are performed.
because we realize that they have been greatly challenged this year. Some didn't have internet connection in communities that are not served. So because of the disadvantage that they were placed in, we have been promoting this, the, 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 the notion that it would be appropriate for us to look at their SBAs, which is the student assessment um, assignments that they have been given and how they have performed over the year, and then also what they did uh, last year, like in the case of Cape, University of the West Indies is, ac is accepting Cape based on the, their, their assessment from their work last year. So it is on that basis we think it is the fairest approach to helping the students who have been challenged because of what has happened and the closure of schools. Um, so it's a continuous program of assessment that is undergone. His comments follow CARICOM's announcement that all CXC regional exams will take place in July. Regional heads met virtually last week and the decision was made. Jamaica was among the dissenting voices. meeting was held on Friday and our permanent secretary represented us because I had to attend a meeting in the, of the cabinet and indicated to the ministers of CARICOM that whilst they have decided to go with the exam in July, Jamaica could not endorse that date because as you can see what has been happening here, as the largest Caribbean island that has been affected um, to the extent that we have, our situation is somewhat different to some of the smaller islands, some of the smaller states. So um, the challenges are much greater and we don't feel that we could make a commitment to hold those exams in July um, under the circumstances. So Concern has been raised as to whether public sector workers will be negatively affected as a result of the effects of COVID-19 crisis on the economy. Prime Minister Andrew Holness addressed the issue on Monday at a Jamaica House press conference. Thanks to the good financial management of the government and in particular the stewardship of the Minister of Finance, for the first time ever in a crisis like this, we have been able to put forward a cash transfer showing that we care to persons who have been displaced from their jobs and for persons who are not employed. And in the good management of our finances, public sector layoff is not something that is within our contemplation. But let's be clear that if we don't get back so as close as possible to capacity and very quickly, then the, as the Minister of Finance likes to call it, the second and third order effects of the crisis would be incalculable. Coffee farmers are calling for help from the government. The COVID-19 pandemic is reportedly threatening the viability of the coffee industry. The Jamaica Coffee Exporters Association, JCEA, wants price support of $170 million to $200 million to enable the sale of non-exportable high mountain and blue mountain coffee to the local market, replacing imports. JCEA President Norman Grant says the measure would ensure the survival of more than 5,000 farmers who grow Blue Mountain and High Mountain coffee. He says the farmers are now facing reductions in demand and sales in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. He says discussions are ongoing with the Jamaica Commodity Regulators Association and the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries on these issues. Care packages were stolen from Ministry of Labor and Social Security personnel during an attack in Enfield, St. Mary on Saturday. Sections of the parish have been under a 14-day quarantine since last week, Thursday. The ministry's permanent secretary, Colette Roberts Risden, says she was surprised by the brazen attack, noting that residents have always been receptive to government workers in their communities. She indicated that the incident happened as a ministry vehicle transporting care packages for distribution came under attack, resulting in four parcels being stolen. The incident has been condemned by Member of Parliament for South East St. Mary, Dr. Norman Dunn, and Mayor of Port Maria, Richard Creary. Security has been beefed up for the social workers since the incident. Gabrielle Thompson brings us up to speed with the world of finance in the Business Report. 
In Monday's trading session, the JSE combined index advanced by 679 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall, market activity resulted from trading in 80 stocks, of which 37 advanced, 30 declined, and 13 traded firm. The junior market index declined by one point to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited, Caribbean Cream Limited, and Caribbean Producers Jamaica. Stocks declined for 138 Student Living Jamaica, 1834 Investments, and Access Financial Services Limited. Trading firm were Cargo Handlers Limited, Carreras Limited, and Epley 7.5% preference shares. Trans Jamaican Highway Limited was the volume leader with 5.5 million units, followed by Wisinka Group Limited Ordinary Shares with 1.8 million units, and Pulse Investments Limited with over 1.5 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Monday, May 11 ended trading at $146.33. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $105.07. The pound sterling traded for $181.21. And the euro ended trading at $160.02. Oil prices rose on Tuesday, boosted by an unexpected commitment from Saudi Arabia to deepen production cuts in June to help drain a supply glut built up during the coronavirus crisis. Brent crude futures advanced 85 cents to $30.48 a barrel. West Texas Intermediate crude futures gained $1.29 to $25.43 a barrel. That's it for the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. In regional stories, more local organizations have been playing their part in providing support for frontline workers in the fight against COVID-19. This time, we catch up with a group in Grand Bahama. There's more in this report from ZNS News. Reach Out Youth Ministries is taking time out on Thursday morning to prepare hundreds of meals for essential workers on Grand Bahama. President of the organization, Dudley Sade, says this is the fourth week that the organization has taken part in this initiative. This week we're dealing with all the central workers. Uh, we're feeding all the old folks home here in Grand Bahama. Uh, but it takes a lot of volunteers. We want to say a special thank you to Palm's Kitchen. Uh, Burger Boy is a part of this and, and all the volunteers that you see here today. Uh, all those uh, frontline workers who are risking their lives, we just, this is our small way to say thank you to them. Uh, we feed almost a thousand of them today. Well, Sade says the efforts of all essential workers are appreciated. And they didn't stay home. Uh, when everyone in their home relaxing, they out here fighting for us. So this is our way to just say thank you to, to all, the, all the central workers. But this couldn't happen without uh, my partner, the Grand Bahama uh, Disaster Relief Foundation. They partner along with us to help us to continue this venture and feed in Grand Bahama. Well, the COVID-19 pandemic has no doubt impacted many industries across the globe. Here on Grand Bahama, the tourism sector has also suffered a major blow. Recently, the management team at the Pelican Bay Resort saw it fitting to feed their employees while supplying them with groceries during this difficult period. General Manager Magnus Alnabak. We're taking the opportunity of giving our staff a care package with some groceries and some things that we think they can do and it's also a way for us to see them coming in and giving a thumbs up and a virtual hug and some kisses from a distance and 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 just see each other because we haven't seen most of our staff for for a long time now we are fighting this all together and i think it is very important that we don't forget to be happy and we we are we are all of us who are who are sick and who are around we have something to be happy about and and i mean there will be an end to this too this too shall pass and i think it's important that we are ready for that and that we try to hit the ground running whenever we can well, the hotel has a total of 67 employees, ranging from various departments. Employees at the hotel property were grateful for this kind gesture. This is overwhelming, especially in the time right now of this pandemic, you know, and a lot of persons have lost hope. A lot of people are home, you know, unable to work at this time. So just the give back is just overwhelming. It's touching. And to be a part of this team, 
Oh, come on, man. Let me try not to shed my tears. <laughs> but I love Pelican Bay and what they're doing for their staff. And this is not the first time. They've always extended a, a heartwarming gift to their staff members. Given the circumstances what we're all under at this time, it just makes you feel a little bit better as an employee, like that they are thinking about you and that they appreciate the work that you do here. So I'm very grateful for them and thank you to the management of Pelican Bay for doing this for us. Taxi operators in Barbados are calling on the government to remove road taxes. For details, we go to this report from Barbados today. Taxi operators are calling for the removal of road tax for their sector. The plea to government comes as they feel the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. It also comes on the heels of a suggestion by the Democratic Labour Party's spokesperson on small business, Ryan Walters, that government utilize their services in helping to transport commuters. The taxi operators say they are not in favor of such a move unless government pays them a stipend. They have also described the requirements for them to pay road tax as unfair. We high pay no road tax. Everything let me just just pay for our permit to renew our permit annually, and that's it. But not pay for road tax. What, what we got pay road tax too? And permit carrying people big jigs, road, uh, Range Rovers, Mercedes, driven boat. They for paying road tax. And the man there, NZD, taxi paying road tax for it's not fair. The taxi operators are also calling for government to give them some form of subsidy during these challenging times. No, we ain't get me get towards here in a little while. You understand know what they could do is give me some money. Let me start home. I'm going to start home relax too. Here, talk to me. See what, is, see what our struggle, what our everyday fight, how we survive, where we live, who we got for in our households. Let me say how they can help me. If you give me two or three hundred dollars, okay. A little bit is better than nothing at all. Yeah, two or three hundred, three hundred minimum a week. You yeah, understand? Because we got to buy food. We still got to pay a bill. A little bill, a water bill, a phone bill. Oh, yeah. Internet bill, the man said, you have to pay this bill at any day. Because they tell you, no, oh, you can pay online. How can you pay online? We, not, we, 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 we out here are not getting an income. We are self employed. In sports, the Jamaica Football Federation, JFF, says it's working on preparations for a rollout of its World Cup campaign. This despite the fact that deliberations are still being held at the CONCACAF level regarding the timing and format for qualifiers for the 2022 FIFA's Men's World Cup. The JFF says it supports the position of both FIFA and CONCACAF to put the health of all football stakeholders at the forefront as the central reference point in all discussions and decisions on this matter and it's cognizant of the reality of financial challenges so a number of initiatives are being discussed with the aim of facing that reality head-on and that's the news on PBCJ thanks so much for watching do remember to stay home as much as possible and stay safe